Hey everybody, we're back with another video in our series on choosing parts for a gaming PC build. In today's video, we'll talk about SSDs and what you need to consider when choosing one. We'll discuss how much storage capacity you need, the differences between SSDs and hard drives, the differences between SATA SSDs and NVMe SSDs, and compatibility issues you need to be aware of. We also need an SSD for our $1,000 gaming PC build, so towards the end of this video, we'll walk you through our thought process on choosing one. Traditional hard drives are actually mechanical devices, meaning they have moving parts. Mechanical hard drives store data on tracks on spinning disks, and mechanical hard drives can only access a single point of data on the disk at a time. For many years, these hard drives were the storage device of choice. On the flip side, SSDs, or solid state drives, store data on NAND flash modules and have no moving parts. SSDs usually feature multiple modules of memory on a single drive, and more than one of those modules can be accessed at the same time. This gives SSDs a huge performance advantage over traditional hard drives. And while traditional hard drives remained viable options for many years, even after the first SSDs hit the market, now that SSDs can be had for much more affordable prices, for the majority of users, it doesn't make a lot of sense to choose a hard drive, especially for a new PC build. SATA and NVMe are two different interfaces that SSDs can use to connect to your system. The SATA interface, in its most advanced form, that's SATA 3, is capped at a maximum transfer rate of 600 megabytes per second. The NVMe interface, which utilizes your system's PCIe lanes and thus has access to higher bandwidth, in its most advanced generation, that's generation 5, is capped at a maximum transfer rate of 16,000 megabytes per second. To utilize Gen 5 though, you need to have a CPU that can support PCIe 5.0, a motherboard that offers PCIe 5.0 lanes for your NVMe SSD, and a Gen 5 SSD. But even Gen 4 with a maximum transfer rate of 8,000 megabytes per second, and Gen 3 NVMe SSDs with a maximum transfer rate of 4,000 megabytes per second, offer much higher potential performance than SATA SSDs. However, in terms of real-world performance, the difference between the two interface options and the different PCIe generations won't be as big as those numbers would indicate, at least in most scenarios. You may see some performance gains in productivity tasks or in the transferring of large files or in the installation of games and applications, for instance. But for tasks like loading games or boot times, you probably won't notice the difference between a SATA SSD and an NVMe SSD. For example, TechSpot benchmarked a number of types of drives and how quickly they loaded games. They found that there was only a small difference in game load times between SATA SSDs and NVMe SSDs. That benchmark was conducted a few years ago, but even today there aren't a ton of scenarios where an NVMe SSD provides a noticeable difference in real-world performance, again with the exception of perhaps large file transfers and some productivity tasks. But if your sole purpose is gaming performance, why would you even choose an NVMe SSD over a SATA SSD? In our opinion, since the price difference between the two types of drives, especially between Gen 3 or Gen 4 SSDs and SATA SSDs, is fairly small, you may as well opt for the better potential speed for the scenarios where it might actually come into play. NVMe SSDs are also far easier to install and they don't require SATA cable connections, which is one less thing you'll have to worry about when you put together your PC, and two less cables that you'll have to worry about connecting. And in our opinion, the less cables you need to use, the better. Furthermore, at some point, game developers will start to develop their games to utilize faster storage devices. And now that the next gen consoles are using NVMe drives, we may see this transition happen sooner than later. So if you already have an NVMe drive in your system, you'll be ready to go as that transition happens. Ultimately though, since the prices aren't that different, we don't see any reason to opt for a SATA SSD right now if you're building a new PC and you have an M.2 port available on your motherboard. If you're upgrading or adding a new SSD to your build or you're building with older used components and you don't have an available M.2 port to connect an NVMe drive, then a SATA SSD will work just fine. Now for storage capacity, different users are going to have different storage needs. Gamers with huge libraries of games who like to mix it up between the different games they play will require more storage than a gamer who lives and dies by one game. This is especially true now that games are becoming larger and larger. A game like Ark Survival Evolved can take up as much as 400 gigabytes of storage with all of its add-ons. That's about $30 alone worth of SSD storage just for that game. 
Video editors will have to deal with a lot of video files, which are larger than other file types, and will need even more storage. People who work heavily with video often require multiple large capacity drives, that's two terabytes, four terabytes, eight terabytes, or more, to meet their needs. Basic users who are just looking to build an entry-level gaming PC or a casual system for word processing, web browsing, or sending emails won't need nearly as much storage. For such users, you could easily opt for an affordable 256 gigabyte or 500 gigabyte drive and upgrade as you need more storage space. It's also important to note that storage devices are one of the easiest components to add to your system. So if it's not in your budget right now to start out with a ton of storage, it really isn't that difficult to add another drive or two down the road. As long as you're not changing your boot drive, which is the drive your operating system is installed on, adding storage is usually as simple as installing it in your existing computer and then formatting it. The bottom line is that you need to consider your specific use case in order to determine how much storage space you really need. As a general rule of thumb, one terabytes of space should be enough for most users, at least to start out with. While there isn't as much to think about with SSD compatibility as there is with the compatibility of other components, there are still a couple of things that you need to consider before you make your decision. If you're looking to get an NVMe drive, you really just need to make sure the motherboard you're choosing has an available M.2 port on it. Of course, if you want to be efficient with your budget, it's a good idea to pick an NVMe drive of a specific generation that your motherboard won't limit. All generations of NVMe SSDs are backwards and forwards compatible, meaning if your CPU and motherboard are limited to using PCIe 3.0, you can still use a Gen 5 or PCIe 5.0 SSD with them. And the same is true in reverse. So there aren't really any hard compatibility issues for NVMe drives so long as your motherboard has an M.2 port. However, if you use a Gen 5 SSD in a motherboard that only offers PCIe 3.0 support, your Gen 5 SSD will be limited to PCIe 3.0 speeds. Therefore, you could have saved quite a bit of money by choosing a Gen 3 NVMe SSD instead. On the flip side, if you have a motherboard that supports PCIe 5.0 and you purchased a Gen 3 NVMe SSD to go with it, you'd lose out on some potential performance. Of course, as we discussed before, you may not notice the real-world difference between using a Gen 3 and Gen 5 SSD, so this isn't an end-of-the-world scenario, and if you needed to save some money, you could definitely go this route. Although if you have it in your budget to get next-generation hardware that supports PCIe 5.0, you'll probably also have enough to get a Gen 5 SSD too. There really aren't any compatibility issues as it concerns SATA SSDs, if you choose a SATA SSD, your motherboard will come with the necessary ports to connect it, and most motherboards also come with SATA cables, so you shouldn't have to worry about how you'll connect your SSD to your motherboard as well. And power supplies come with the necessary SATA power connectors too. You also won't have to worry about whether or not your case can hold an SSD, as almost all modern cases will offer at least one mounting location for a SATA SSD. When it comes to SSD performance, the main specification you'll want to consider is the given read and write times for a drive. While drives of a given generation will have similar read and write times, higher end drives can offer better maximum sequential read and write performance. For instance, if we look at Gen 4 SSDs, Crucial offers a couple of different P Plus series drives, the P5 Plus and the P3 Plus. If we look at the one terabyte models for these drives, the P5 Plus offers sequential read speeds of up to 6,600 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds of up to 5,000 megabytes per second, whereas the cheaper P3 Plus offers sequential read speeds of up to 5,000 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes per second. So there can be a noticeable difference in read and write speeds between different drives of a same generation. Again though, in terms of real-world performance, you probably won't notice that big of a difference between these two crucial drives. But if the price is similar between two drives you're considering, checking which drive has the faster read and write times may help make your decision easier. Now that we've discussed the factors you need to consider when choosing an SSD, let's find a suitable option for our $1,000 bill. We recommend that you spend anywhere between 3 to 7% of your total budget on your SSD, so we'll be looking to spend $30 to $70 on a solid state drive. For starters, we'd like to choose an NVMe SSD over a SATA SSD, not so much from a performance standpoint, because as we discussed for gaming, there isn't a huge advantage to using an NVMe SSD over a SATA SSD yet, but more so 
so we can eliminate a couple of cable connections in our build to make the cable management process smoother. There also isn't as big of a price difference between NVMe SSDs and SATA SSDs as there once was, so we figure we may as well opt for the better technology for just a little more money. We'd also like to start with the one terabyte drive. Now our processor, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, offers support for PCIe 4.0. We've also chosen a motherboard, the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4, that supports PCIe 4.02. So we can put a Gen 4 SSD in this build. Of the options that are out there, we've heard good things about the Crucial P5 Plus. It's considered one of the better Gen 4 NVMe options on the market, and it only costs $46 on Amazon. That's cheaper than some one terabyte SATA SSDs. So with that considered, we went ahead and chose the Crucial Drive for our build. With an additional $46 spent on our SSD, we've now spent a total of $845 on all of our components. That gives us about $80 each to spend on our power supply and our case. We should be able to find two solid options for both of those components with our remaining budget. In the next video, we'll talk about how to choose the right PC case for your build. We'll see you there.